Hello and welcome everyone to a new Heroes of Mind and Magic video and you guessed it, it's another tier list but this one is gonna be rather short because my list is gonna be like very incomplete so far and the idea is to add to this tier list as we go um, so yeah, as you can already see from the title and the video so far, this is gonna be a tier list of all the challenge maps that I've completed. I'm gonna be ranking them D to S tier and uh, as I complete more maps, I'm gonna be ranking them, you know, I'm gonna be rank updating my tier list and I'll be presenting that to you. It should be quite a bit of fun. So... By the way, the tier list is going to be my subjective opinion and my experience with the map. It's not going to be, you know, anything that you should base your opinion of. I'm just sharing mine because, you know, that's fun to do on the internet. So, first off is the most classic one. It is The Wayfarer, the, my first challenge map ever. And my god, it was actually really, really hard and really exciting and fun. There was only one downside, and that's because that I had like a full chat that wanted me to tell everything about the map and everything that they know. Uh, that was the only downside of the map, but honestly the map is like very well crafted, and it is such a legendary map for like a really good reason. Um, well, honestly, I don't feel like there's much of a story there, but like in terms of gameplay, in terms of like the progression and everything, and the world is presented with you, the types of secrets there are, the types of challenges challenges that you have to overcome, everything is like really exciting. And this is like a base foundation of like what a challenge map should be, in my opinion. So, as a prime example for every single map and the way that it should be, I think um, that uh, Wayfair belongs in the S tier. But I would say low S tier, but that's just because of... Uh, of chat and the way that I did my early map playthroughs until I learned to do them better. So yeah. Next up is we had Unleashing the Bloodthirsty. This was a really exciting map. We, for the first time, I encountered a map that actually had somewhat of a good story. You know, we had uh, El Trueno and all the other guys. We were actually going towards like a very well-defined goal of unleashing the Bloodthirsty. There were like good memes in the template. There were jokes that I didn't understand because I don't speak all these languages, but you guys explained it to me. And that made the playthrough even better. And it was honestly a ton of fun. This map also goes in um, really, really high. I would actually put it above Wayfair in terms of my personal enjoyment of the map. Then we have the Devil is in the Detail. This map is like pretty different. It is more like an adventure map rather than a challenge map because you can play through as many of the different factions. Um, there's probably like a lot to find and interact with in the map that I actually didn't explore in my personal playthrough. This map has a lot of replayability. However, I do not give points to master replayability. That is because there's so many great maps out there that it, and I wouldn't experience them all, so I'm not gonna be replaying a single map even if it is really good. And if it is, if it does have things for me to find. Um, so because of that, I would say that it is B tier. It is, um, it's okay, it's quite a bit of fun, and uh, playing it, uh, playing through it once was a decent experience, though it does, it did get like a little bit grindy towards the end. So, there we go. Next up is Arrow the Mage. Now, yes, this is the map that I actually ended up failing, kind of. Well, I mean, I got stuck and I didn't really know what to do. I don't know if it was my fault, uh, because I'm like, too bad, or whether there was actually something with the game. I couldn't really read the text because there was no English version when I was playing it, so I can't really count on the story so far. However, the way that you progress on this map and the actual challenges that you face actually are amazing. And, like, at least uh, the first half of the playthrough that I had was an absolute bliss. It was such a cool, I mean, such a cool, well-developed map. It is, I honestly adore it. I might, like, replay it, the replay the English version when I read the story, and when I probably will be able to progress because I, like, know more information, you know? Um, in that, uh, so I might revisit this map at some point because I think it is that good. 
The experience that I had with Iron Mage lead me to put it in A tier, at least. It was really, really good. Then Sanders Falling. Now, some masks are able to, like, um, really develop their story well without overwhelming the player. This is not one of those maps, okay? This is a novel. And if you want to read, like, a cool story and all of that, then Sanders Folly might just be the map for you. However, that's not really what I'm looking for in my Hero 3 playthroughs. Um, there has to be, like, a pretty well-reasoned-out um, route of progression between, like, the story and the gameplay. You can't, like, just charge, like, two to three hours of reading only to be able to, like, play a little bit before, like, even more. Um, I feel like um, the medium chosen to present a story um, is not very good and it doesn't belong in Heroes 3 as much. But that's just my opinion. You might have different ones and that's okay. I... I didn't enjoy it too much and I will probably not be continuing to play for either. Oh yeah, also, I will tell you the story of why I actually ended Sanders Folly, okay? And if I don't enjoy it, I will give it, uh, the map like enough of a chance to redeem itself and like I will continue you know, more. But in this case, I actually recorded an entire two-hour video of Sanders Folly Part 3, and I had a bug where I... It didn't record my screen. It was just a still image that was being recorded with my audio. And yeah, thinking of replaying that makes me a little bit... Uh, yeah, I don't want to do it. So that's why I ended up uh, quitting Sanders Folly. So sorry to the people that actually enjoyed the series, but that's how it is. I will not be continuing that. So, then we have Epica, the video that I uploaded, uh, yeah, the it, Epica's already uploaded onto YouTube fully, and Epica was actually such a cool map, it was a very, very, um, how do I say, I would call it a generic map, it wasn't like much of a challenge map, and it wasn't like uh, only an adventure map, it was something in the middle of those two. Um, there was like a baseline story that you can like get into so you know you're going to some sort of goal It felt like that which is really really good and there is also the um, Yeah, there's also the actual aspects of the gameplay which were also like pretty exciting I feel like the map was actually really really good and I enjoyed my my playthrough of it I wouldn't put it like alongside the legends and the S tier, but I would give it a solid A tier I enjoyed Epica. Next is we have Empire of the World. Now for the YouTube people, this is actually a little, a little bit of spoilers, but I already played through the entire of Empire of the World uh, 1, and I already started Empire of the World 2, okay? I haven't played through the entire uh, Empire of the World 2, but uh, I feel like I know enough to give you my experience of it. So Empire of the World 1 is where the peasants build your kingdom entirely. The peasants are actual gods, able to manifest anything by desiring it. And then you are Maximus, uh, taking back the Roman Empire and then conquering the rest of the world, because why not? Um, I actually like the setting. It presents itself well, and it plays itself well as well. So, great map. And... Uh, the only problem is that it's a little bit too easy. I would like it to be harder. There's also like an airbook that's placed on the map and it's like teasing you, you know, you want to pick it up and, uh, you know, like, uh, grieve the entire rest of the map by using Dimension Lore and Fly. And you know what? You can actually do that. You're presented with a Black Orb. Black Orb lets you kill a bunch of dragons and then you kill a bunch of dragons and then you have Dimension Lore. So you can like end the rest of the map. I feel like that is an oversight. If you are gonna place that, you should probably place like an absurd amount of Azers or something, at the very least. Or maybe the map ma maker did intend for some people to be courageous enough to get the Tom of Air Magic Teal. So, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Anyway, I definitely enjoyed this map quite a bit. It is going in the A tier. And then Empire of the World Teal, the map maker, really kicked it up a notch with this one. Uh, it flows way better. The quests are actually fun and exciting. And if you, especially if you played the first iteration of the map, there's like a lot of things um, that are gonna be having like the same tendencies, but they're not exactly the same. So you feel like you're playing like a new, fresh map, but then you also can use the knowledge from the last one to help you out as well. Uh, for example, there was the crew, the quest, uh, the, the way that you get um, the town portal is that you give the crown, uh, crown of Supreme Magi, uh, to a quest, okay? 
And it's the same on both maps. So you can actually kind of guesstimate what and where is gonna get you something, which is actually really cool and fun. So it feels like a sequel, not just a remake, uh, which is awesome. And Empire of the World, both in terms of its gameplay setting and the enjoyability straight up, is going to S tier. Uh, so far, that's what I think, and I'm pretty sure as I play on, it's only gonna be more of that. So, so far, this is my personal tier list of the challenge maps that i played so far. Please let me know what you think in the, uh, in the comments below. Uh, follow, I mean, follow me on Twitch, I stream basically every single day, and also subscribe on YouTube. Thank you, and till next one, goodbye.